Hey guys and welcome to another devlog video where you'll be pleased to know that the holiday slack is over and I've gotten back to working on the game. In the past few weeks I've been working on implementing an inventory system and items into the game, as well as a variety of other small tasks that you may or may not be interested in. So I was really excited to get to work on the inventory system because it was actually the first true gameplay related system. Most of the stuff I've done up until this point was very tech-centered, but I digress. After a quick scroll through my game design document, yes I actually do have one of those, the first thing I did was I kinda made a very ugly mockup in Photoshop to get a rough idea of what the UI would need to look like, or at least to figure out what kind of core components I needed. And once I got all of the necessary parts on screen, I set out to recreate this in the engine's UI system. There was a slight problem though. If I look back at the earlier UI code that I wrote, that for the placeholder main menu for example, there was a lot of this going on. And while I definitely think that a customizable UI system was a good thing, the fact that I have to spend hundreds of lines of code configuring the style of each widget, not so much. So I was faced with a dilemma here. Do I just continue hard coding all the UI stuff so I can start working on the inventory UI immediately or do I come up with a more elegant solution that is going to cost me some time now but may save me a lot of time in the future and as you can probably guess I chose the latter. The first thing that came to mind was it would be really nice if I could define all my UI styles somewhere in a config file so I could change it without needing to recompile the game and this way I could also easily reskin the UI later down the line too. And it just so happens that there is something out there that does this very well in the web dev world, namely CSS. So I was immediately wondering whether it would be possible to somehow integrate CSS into the engine, maybe with a couple of custom properties and stuff. I did a little bit of digging and I came across a library called libcss. And honestly, in retrospect, I wish I would never have found it because it turned out to be a massive waste of time. I spent over an entire day trying to get it to compile because it was using plain Unix make files, I think. So first of all, I had a hard time integrating it into my build system because of that. Unfortunately, after that, I realized that they use some kind of parser generator to generate their CSS parsing code. The generator itself was so confusing I didn't even manage to get it to run because there was basically no documentation about it at all. There was the CCLI tool that you had to compile and then a bunch of Python scripts that did god knows what. So this made it very hard to add new CSS properties which is something that I wanted. So ultimately I ended up just tossing this whole thing in the garbage. So what could I do then? Well, screw CSS, enter OSS. Orbis style sheets. That's right. As if I hadn't wasted enough time already, I decided to write my own recursive descent CSS parser. And honestly, it wasn't actually as hard as I thought it would be. It took all in all about two days. This is what an OSS style sheet looks like. As you can see, it's borrowing heavily from SAS syntax, which is like a CSS preprocessor or whatever they call it. And as a result, VS Code can actually parse this as SAS. So you can see we got some syntax highlighting over here. You can see a few properties are underlined here because those are Orbis specific properties. The rest of these are pretty much the same as our CSS counterpart. The biggest difference here is the absence of the display property and the float and the flex box and all of that. Basically all of the things that I think suck about CSS. Instead, I have an anchor property that is much simpler that allows you to specify where the origin of a widget should be inside of its parent and then the actual layouting is done by like a box layout widget. Okay so with that out of the way here is the placeholder inventory UI that I made. Remember this is definitely not final it kind of looks like shit but it'll do for now. As you can see you've got the base inventory then you've got some equipment slots you got head chest legs boots and then a bunch of trinkets and over here you have the hotbar slots. If you play something in here it'll show up on the hotbar at the bottom of the screen and if you're wondering why there are two rows here that's something new I'm trying out. Uh, the game is going to have dual wielding so I've seen in other games that have this kind of hotbar system that dual wielding is sometimes a bit of a pain or a bit clunky. Okay, one last thing I should point out is that if you have a mod that auto equips your shield, you'll have to either disable it or remove the shield from your inventory if you want to dual wield. So what you have here is instead of eight hotbar slots, you have eight pairs of slots. So if you have two swords in these slots, uh, you can quickly change to a bow, for example, or a sword and shield or a staff and a tome. Tons of different options and there won't be any clunkiness with like offhand shields being unequipped and shit like that. 
Since my game's focus is not really gonna be on survival, I don't really mind giving players a large inventory, as I don't think that extra convenience is going to take much away here. Here you can see I also implemented item tooltips, also placeholder by the way. These are actually two of the three starting items by the way. The functionality right now is pretty basic, you can move stuff around and then you can drop items by dragging them out of the inventory UI, and then if you get close to it, you can pick it back up. As you can see, it's very bare bones, there are no VFX or sound effects or anything, it's very basic. I'm really focusing on getting all of the basics in first so we can start doing some primitive gameplay and then the polish will come in later stages. Apart from all of the stuff I mentioned, I also did a lot of smaller stuff, like when you close the inventory, the mouse cursor is now hidden and doesn't leave the window anymore so you can look as around as much as you want. There's also a little crosshair in the middle of the screen, the hotbar already mentioned, and there's also a very basic chat functionality that I'm mostly using to run in-game commands for now, although you can use it to chat just fine. Everything I mentioned so far also works with multiplayer of course. I also added static colliders to the physics system because little did you know I didn't actually have those yet. I only support spheres, capsules and boxes, but that's really all you ever need. You can create very complicated shapes out of combinations of these anyway. So finally, you can't walk through the trees anymore. On top of all of that, there is also a host of backend changes and additions such as player profiles, rebindable hotkeys and I'm probably forgetting a bunch of stuff. And I almost forgot to mention, I actually created a Discord server that you guys can join, the link is in the description. It's not very active yet, I haven't posted in it much, truth be told, this is all still kind of new to me. If anyone's got experience with running public community discords or anything like that, and you feel like helping out, please let me know in the comments or in the Discord. And yeah, that's it for this video. As always, thank you very much for watching, feel free to subscribe for more content, and I'll see you next time.